We live. Praise the Lord, everyone. Coming to you tonight from the church. Amen. It's uh, cold and wintry, snowy, icy night. And uh, so I figured I would let everybody stay at home. Amen. And we would do the live stream to make it uh, work for everybody. If you're listening, welcome. Amen. Glad you're here. If you're, if you're not and listen later, we'll be glad that you're there. Amen. So, but I want to go on. I got some announcements to make. Um, we have the dinner coming this weekend. Amen. And uh, so if you need to get a hold of anyone, get a hold of my wife, Sister Heather or Sister Richards, and uh, bring everybody that you want. The more, the merrier. So we'll be happy with that. So also, Saturday morning, if you can come, amen, and you can help, we need to set up the tables. Usually we do this after Wednesday night service. And, uh, but we, uh, we just wanted to, uh, let everyone know we could use the help. Amen. And, uh, there'll be people here practicing for our singspiration on Sunday. I'm looking forward to everything. We're going to have a great time. Amen. And, uh, so don't forget that that'll be Saturday morning. If you come a little early and help them out. Amen. Then we, uh, don't forget our business meeting. On February the 10th, that is two Wednesday nights from tonight, we'll have our annual business meeting. Amen. You are more than welcome to come. We'll go over everything that happened last year as long as far as financial and, and everything else. And we thank everybody for what they have done. Your contribution slips will be ready by this weekend. Amen. Sister Fergie is working on them diligently. Amen. We... Uh, it's pretty easy when we had 12 to 20. Now we got 60 to 70. So <laughs> we just uh, praising the Lord and thanking the Lord for everything that he has done. Even in 2020, it could be said to be the worst year of anyone's life because of what was going on and how it all was happening. But for the Connecting Point Church, it was a ble year of blessing and prosperity. Amen. And we thank God for that. I started a series, and that's why I wanted to go on tonight with the series about the, the danger of divided loyalties. We've already did number one and number two. This will be part three. And the underlining title is God's plans have always included us. If you want to follow along or you want to grab your Bible, it's just a good time to practice. Amen. Amen. I believe you should uh, you should uh, make sure that what someone is preaching, when they say refer to the Bible, you know, check them, because not everybody does it the way it's supposed to be done. But I'm glad that we have men and women here that believe the Word of God and not only believe it, but preach it and teach it. But out of Colossians, this is where Paul was talking to them. At the very beginning in the first chapter, go to Colossians 1, 21 through 23. And ye that were sometimes alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, ye now have he reconciled. 22, in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable. In his spirit. 23, if ye continue in the faith, grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of that gospel which ye have heard and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven. Father, we ask you to bless this message, this, this study tonight. God, let it not only reach into our hearts, not only speak into our lives, 
But Lord, when it, whatever it does, let it set there, let it permeate, let it grow, let it help us make better decisions, let it help us be better people, better examples and better witnesses for you. Because it is for you and you only. Hallelujah. And it's by you and by you only that we are here. In Jesus' name we pray. There's an old business theory and belief that says you will never have to worry about someone who is willing to put skin in the game. In other words, is someone who's willing to invest as much as you or more than you in the beginning because they see and believe in your dream like you do. There's a lot to be said. It, 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 I can just imagine seeing God on the throne. And when he sees that we really believe the dream and we really believe what he is trying to tell us, show us, and lead us into. See, I, I've been teaching about the dangers and consequences of having a divided attitude and spirit leading us throughout life. That's why we need to remember what James said in James 1 and 8, because it's very easy to slip away. And he talked about a double-minded person, a person who is all over the board, and how they will never find stability anywhere and at any time. That's why he said a double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways, because they are too flighty, they are too inconsistent they they are here one day and they're over here another day i want to be i want to be as good a christian as i can be i want to be as good a person as i can be every day but then there are also some great rewards awaiting those who have remained steadfast and unmovable like paul asked and for those who have stayed faithful in and through everything Regardless of what it is, why is it that when some of are being tested and tried, when they are being challenged, they feel God has forsaken or forgotten or even abandoned them? It's because they are divided in their thinking and in their feelings and emotions. I believe that's why Peter was trying his best to encourage everyone in First Peter 4. See, because he, he knew they were asking, if God loves me, then why do I got to suffer? If, if God loves me, why do I got to struggle? Why is it that I am always up against this or I'm always up against this? But, but, but you know, the Bible says it, it's, he is moved by the feelings of our infirmities and our challenges. And in fact, Paul said, in, or Peter said in 412, he said, uh, beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trials. Fiery trial, I mean, trials are trials, but fiery trials are, are, are a whole nother thing, which is to try you as though some strange thing has happened to you. But he goes on to tell them, but rejoice. Well, Pastor Howe, that, that's kind of weird anyway or strange when you tell me to rejoice when I'm suffering. But listen to it. It says, but rejoice in as much as ye are partakers of Christ's suffering, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. So we can't think it's strange concerning the testing and trying of our faith. See, God is always and he will always provide and supply everything we need to live a full and complete life in him. And to reach, and so that we can reach that expected end that he has prepared for us and to reach the end of our race. That's why one of his greatest promises he was, he has given to us. And he has said that he will not only stay with us through thick and thin, good or bad, tough times or good times. He said he would go with us even Unto the end. What a friend. The Bible, even there's even one writer that said that it, whatever your family fails you, that he will be a friend that's closer than even a brother or sister or a family member. Because, see, God w has always been intentional from the very beginning, and it started at creation. 
And nothing he does is ever by mistake or by chance or because he had nothing else to do or haphazardly. He does not do things partially or halfway. Everything God created and did at creation was to create ev create everything man would ever need to not only survive everything in life, but to also be successful in all he does and in all of his ways as long as he does it right. And he does it according to the plan and the instructions and the word of God. See, when David told us in Proverbs 23 and 23, he said, by the truth, you know that part. But see, there's something else he was telling us here. Not only to buy the truth and sell it not, I mean, we get that. But he also said, also wisdom and instruction and understanding. See, it's from the experiences of life that I believe God helps instruct and mentor us as Christians, as men and women, to mature us in the areas that he needs us to be mature in. You know, there's something that I learn about every challenge and every trial and every test. Hallelujah. Regardless of, uh, of how difficult or how big of a challenge it is or how long that test may last, I found one thing, that he is one that is faithful in all things, not some things, not a, a few things, but he is faithful in all things. And he's never left me nor forsaken me. But he has been with me all the way through everything that I go through. See, David said he didn't pray God take me out of the trial. Don't pray that God take you out of the trial. Remember what he said? Rejoice. You know, I know it's difficult, but he, David, David taught us something. He said, don't take me out of the trial, but I need you to go with me through the trial. All the way through, even in the darkest of darks, even in the toughest of times, God is wanting us and, and wanting us to understand that there's reason and purpose for everything that he does. And Ecclesiastes, and I didn't give it to him, but uh, he talks about Ecclesiastes, about the time and the seasons, and there's a reason for all that a purpose for all of that, you know, when he talks about all the other things that go on. And we've covered this over and over and over, but in the 11th verse, he said, but God makes everything beautiful in time. In other words, if you will hold on, you know, you may have been shamed in your life. How many, how many of you out there that before you came to God, you were shamed? because certain things happened to you or someone did something to you or someone, uh, someone crossed a line that they shouldn't have crossed or they hurt you in some way or they stole from you or they cheated you or they beat you out of your money or they, they, they did everything wrong that could have been done. We can't, what, what the spirit needs to do for us today is, is the spirit has a way of healing experiences have a way of healing. That's what he was telling them in that 11th verse, that, that you're going to go through this and you're going to go through that and you're going to have this season and that season and there's going to be times when it, you can't spend the money that God is blessing you with and then there's going to be times you can't find the money that you need to survive. But he's still God. And out of all those experiences, I remember when I came, I was shamed. I, I hung my head with certain people in certain crowds. Uh, but God continued to tell me, here, you just buy wisdom and you buy instruction. And, and, and he says, I'm going to help you through this. And he took all that pain and all that confusion, all that shame and all that wrong that was done in my life. And he turned it around and he made it beautiful. He made it beautiful in time. And when I hear someone, you know, one of the greatest stories that I ever heard was a beautiful young couple that was in our church. They got saved. We were going to St. Charles Church. Their name was Brother and Sister Dusenberry. And they, 
Bill and Kay were great people. And, but it was a sad day that one day they came home and found Bill, Bill had passed. And it wasn't a, a, a good thing. It wasn't anything to talk about. In fact, it, it kind of knocked all of us, the wind out of all of us as a church. But I'll never forget one day I come and I was teaching Sunday school that morning at Bethel. And uh, this was years down the road after they had been serving God that this happened. They had moved to out of state. I believe it was Oklahoma or somewhere. And just certain things. When, when things get piled on, see, there, there's a danger of having a divided spirit. Because there's places that the enemy is going to push you to when you stand in that valley of decision and he has pushed some the wrong way. And the end thereof was devastating and horrible. But I'll never forget, I run into Sister Dusenberry that, that morning and, and she, she was very heavy laden she was very burdened because of everything that had happened and just the loss of someone that been in your life me and my wife just celebrated 44 years it would just i don't even want to think about what would happen if if god took the one i love out of my life because it's it's because of her and God and different people that God has put in my life. I'm just reminiscing here tonight, if you don't mind. But see, I, I stood there that day and I heard the pain. I felt the pain. I seen the pain. But see, God knows how to walk in those situations and walk into those circumstances. I've seen him do it over and over and over again. I don't know why it has to happen the way it happens. I don't know why we have to go that way. But God has confidence in every one of us that if we will stay faithful, that he will show himself even more faithful to us. Has anybody, God, been good to you? Even in the toughest times of your life, you found his presence and you found his spirit to be with you, walking with you and communicating with you. But after that morning that we had talked and, and she came and prayed, and Ann is her name, and she came and prayed, and it was about two months later, I was up teaching again, believe it or not. <laughs> But as I was getting ready to go to the pulpit and come running through the side door of the auditorium, there was a big auditorium. She ran up, Brother Fergie, Brother Fergie, Brother Fergie. I got such a great testimony. She said, you know, the last time I was here, you spoke into me and you talked about how God will take any circumstance, regardless of how dark, how painful, how deep it cuts us and wounds us, and he will bring good and make it beautiful and use it for his glory somewhere down the line and in time. She said the other day, or it was about a few weeks ago, I was in the grocery store and I ran into a lady, <clears throat> excuse me, that was in the aisle at the grocery store and she was standing there by her cart all alone weeping. She said, all of a sudden, I felt the presence of God come over me. She said, I, I, I really didn't even know what was going on yet, Pat, Brother Fergie. She says, but I remember the message that you preached that day. Sometimes you just got to keep on coming. You got to keep on believing. You got to keep on reaching. You got to keep on trusting. You can't be divided at the wrong time because the enemy will use it against you before he... He will bless you with that moment. But there was something that began to happen and she didn't even realize. And when she walks, see God, he knows exactly what time to move and what to do at that very moment in time that you need that 
blessing and that promise to come to pass. And as she walked down, she didn't even know what was going on. She goes, God, what are you doing? How are, why are you doing this to me? I, I don't know what to do, but I'm going to trust you. And she kept walking toward that lady and got beside her. Something inside her, she just, she be like my wife speaking to somebody in a group. That just, it doesn't really happen that often. And it's not that she's ashamed or anything. She just, she's just not that kind of person. She's not like, I, I can have a conversation with a dead tree limb but she has a difficult time but whenever God uses her she has won so many souls to God and I know you're watching baby and I love you and I, I appreciate what you speak into my life you spoke into me tonight you know just let God use you she told me and I said I will and I know you ain't here but I know somebody's out there that needs to hear this story and when she walked up there see God makes everything beautiful in time that's why we cannot let things drive wedges in our mind and in our hearts and in our spirits don't ever be go around with a divided attitude or spirit in you but when she rolled up on this woman all of a sudden, she said it was out of my mouth before I even knew what was going on. And, and she goes, everything okay? And she said, yeah, my teenage son just committed suicide yesterday. And I, I don't know what, to, I don't even know where I'm at. I, I, can't, I, can't, I can't do anything. And that's whenever Ann was able to reach into the depths of her pain. <laughs> Deep in the depths of her pain and be able to pull something, a witness and a testimony, a moment in time that was so dark on that day, that was so painful in that moment. Uh, but she was able to bring that back up uh, and God made it beautiful in that very moment and she was able to witness to this young lady like no one else I don't know how to witness to something like that I don't even know where to begin to say I can barely preach a funeral of that that nature and that kind but God has helped me but that's what I'm trying to tell somebody today it's it's time to for you to not have a divided spirit. You can't afford to have that because God needs you at any given moment to be a voice, to be able to speak into lives. That's why, church, God is blessing us right now. That's why God is doing things in our life. That's why we see people coming into this church that we invited one time. There's people that you don't even have to invite them no more. They just want to come. And no, they haven't prayed in the altar. They've never experienced the Holy Ghost. But before this year is over, I believe in my spirit that God is going to baptize them with the Holy Ghost. And with fire like he did, uh, he's going to deliver somebody. He's going to be able to, these people are going to be able to reach inside themselves and bring up. That's why David said, and Solomon said, and all of them said, don't only buy truth, but buy wisdom and instruction and understanding. She and she ran in. She goes, I didn't, I didn't know what to do for, 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 for days and weeks and months. But she said, all of a sudden, God was able to help me bring that up out of my spirit. And in my brokenness and in my weakness, God was able to let me be a voice I didn't know, use a voice I didn't know I even had. And that woman followed her to church the next service. And that woman found the freedom that Anne knew of in Jesus Christ. That's why God's plans have always included his church and included his people. That's why we have to be faithful. If we want God to do something for us, all he asked us to do is do it first. If you want God to be faithful in your life, you need to learn to be faithful to him. Not only in your voice, not only, you know, we got people, they tell people about Jesus, but then whenever someone follows their life and they say, well, you're not like the pastor, you're not faithful. Why don't you go to church all the time? Oh, tough question. That ain't even in my notes. But that's how serious the moment is getting. What the one writer say in the New Testament, the hour has come and now is 
for the true church to rise up and be the church. We must worship him in spirit and in truth so that others can experience truth and salvation. Why does God do those things? I don't know. But all I can be a witness to today is I have seen over and over and over again, regardless of who it was, regardless of what it was, God was able to bring strength in the time of trouble. What did he tell us? I'll be your help, your very present help in the times of trouble. Why? Because God's plans have always included us. Oh, I've walked those lonely roads just like you have. I could tell sad story after sad story. But before I get done, there's something that rises up inside of me. And I remember the day how much pain and how much it hurt and how confusing it was and, and why, 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 why I had all the whys and what fors. Why me? What for? Why did I have to go through this? But then something comes up out of me that gives me a voice to, when I tell somebody that I know is hurting. Like we've had nearly 10 funerals in the, since Thanksgiving. What do you say whenever they just keep on coming and they keep on coming? But you, some of you that was in them services, we watched Sister Stuckelmeyer could barely walk into the funeral home. She was so broken. But then all of a sudden we begin to preach the word of God. We begin to lift up the name of Jesus. We begin to talk of the futures and the plans that God has for all that have been faithful. We knew Brother Phil was a very faithful man and we knew that he was one that was loyal. He, he knew who his God was. Uh, he had made up in his mind a long time ago that he was going to serve God and him only will he serve. Uh, hallelujah. And we begin to talk about the reward and the crown that he's awaiting him when he gets. He, he He's going to be like Paul. I have fought a good fight. Uh, I have finished. I have kept the faith. And I am going to receive the crown. And we watched how that brokenness, something wrenched down into the depths of Sister Stuckermeyer's spirit and was able to raise up a praise that God is faithful to those who trust him. Put your Don't put your trust in chariots. Don't put your trust in men. Don't put your trust in anything in this world. Put your trust in God. Make up in your mind that I'm not going to have a divided spirit or attitude. I'm not going to I'm not going to be double minded. I'm going to serve God and him only will I follow. Him only will I obey and him only will I serve. See, that's what I'm trying to tell somebody here today. Don't only by the truth, uh, but gain wisdom from your experiences uh, and gain understanding from your experiences. Uh, and most of all, listen to the instructions uh, of the Word of God. Because without Him, the song says, I would be nothing. Without Him, I would fail. Without Him, I would be drifting like a ship without a sail. Hallelujah. See, that's why we have to buy into the wisdom and instruction of God. Why? So we would not only understand God and his ways, but that we would have a true revelation of who God is and how he works for us in us and through us. See, as long as he is leading us, listen to me, we will never get lost and we will never go astray. It's when we begin to question the overall process. Excuse me. Believe it or not, there's not a person sitting in this congregation, but I feel the Holy Ghost in this place. 
See, when we begin to question the overall process, and we question every challenge and every test, that we become a real problem to God because we have lost our focus. See, when you build a house, I told Caleb I was going to talk about this Sunday. And I said, something told me not to. And I said, I'll just save it for my, my Bible study. But what happens around here? These guys, I know they're looking at my notes or something because he preached about building a house Sunday. I know you out there. I, I know you out there seeing me. You know, Sister Stephanie probably mad at me. I told Caleb, I said, we're going to call off church, but tell Sister Stephanie I need to be at church early. I want her to sing because Sister Brittany can't make it. She's in a snowstorm. Just tell her it's an old song on my heart. So he did it, you know, well. Uh, we had a good moment to laugh. Sorry, Sister Stephanie, but we needed a laugh on a snowy day. <laughs> but he talked about, see, when we when you build a house, and we got a lot of construction, guys. I mean, I I'm looking at these pews and I see Joe and Jake and I see I see uh Jason and I see Caleb and I see all them guys that they, you know, they swing them hammers and more power to them. I mean, I'll I'll let them have my hammer if they want it. You know, only thing I know about hammers is that song. Well, if I had a hammer, I didn't know. No. <laughs> These guys in the sound booth are looking at me like this guy's done lost his mind. I'm just, yeah, yeah, it's been gone for a few days, just centuries. <laughs> but see, when you build a house, you will always have a set of blueprints. And if, if you're out there, co contractors, builders, say, amen, I heard you. And usually on the front page of those blueprints is a picture of the finished product, what they are trying to build. A picture of what they are trying to accomplish. And then after page one, there's page after page. In fact, they call it phase after phase. And it, on each of these pages and each of these phases, there is instruction after instruction that has to be followed in detail before the house is completed and final. They said that if the arch that's up on in the, in the city of St. Louis, I know some of you think it's McDonald arches, but it's really the arch and it's a landmark, <laughs> you know, uh, I remember taking one of my cousins, they, they from the, the backwoods and we pulled up past there and they go, man, that's a big McDonald's. And I go, but that ain't a McDonald's. That's the gateway arch, but Hey, each is eat. But, but what was, they said, if it would have been off by just a fraction of an inch in the lower part, when they got to the top, it wouldn't even have come close to meeting at the top. That's why you have to follow in detail every instruction. And if we miss or skip just one tiny part of the plans or the process, the furnished product will not be what it was meant to be when it's completed. Why? Because you altered the true plans and you change the blueprints of those plans. See, until we are convinced we are per and we are persuaded. How many remember the other night I was talking about, you know, we have to be persuaded. You know, maybe later I'll pick up on this. Maybe later I'll 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 believe this. But right now I'm just gonna be no, you you'll never follow the plan of salvation if you don't have a revelation of it. If you're not persuaded that what we are telling you is the the only thing you can do to get to heaven. A man has to repent. He has to be baptized, not just in water, not just pour something on him. The Bible says you got to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. I believe it's in Acts 2.38. If you got your Bibles and somebody's sitting there with you as a visitor, read it to him. He said, repent and be baptized, all of you.
in the name of Jesus Christ. Why? For the remission of your sins. There it is. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. See, when we repent, we cross a threshold. Hallelujah. And the Bible says that God just starts pouring into us immediately. And then we go through. See, I've seen some, uh, I've seen some repent and get baptized. Or no, some get baptized and then receive the Holy Ghost. Or some get the Holy Ghost and then get baptized. But none of it was of any effect unless you first repent. When you one guy says, how will you know? I said, when you cross the threshold and you have done it from the depths of your heart and from the heart, your mouth and your mind speak. So whenever your heart is right and your mind is right and you've made up in your mind and you are persuaded, the Bible says, "He shall, ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. See, until we are convinced and we are persuaded, that God will do what he says, then we will never experience God's power or any of his promises. See, we will always get in trouble, and we always will fail every time we push and rush anything in our life. See, the Bible didn't say push and rush when it comes to the things of God in your life, the will of God in your life. It tells us to wait upon the Lord. See, if we don't learn how to wait on God, we will never have the support or strength of God that we will need with us when we go to battle. If you want ministry in your life, you listen to me, even young people. You want ministry in your life, learn to wait on God. Learn to live for God. Learn to serve God with a whole heart. See, you 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 might you you can't live for God in the church house only. You got to learn how to live for God better outside than you do inside. Hallelujah. Because if you'll get better at it outside than you do inside, or you'll match match play or be equal then you have arrived and you are persuaded that what you are doing has purpose and has meaning. And God has purpose for everything you go through. See, the Bible didn't say push or rush. And wait, because we don't learn how to wait on God. We'll never have his support. See, we can't ever cut corners or rush God into anything. We can't worry ourselves with it with or about the details. And then, God, I mean, I've already done that over there. How many of you feel like you feel, you just feel like you're going in a circle sometimes? Huh? You ever felt like you're going in, like somebody nailed one of your feet to the floor and you just keep going in a circle? That's part of the process. That's part of the process. I don't know why it has to happen like that. See, we can't quarters, we'll never, we cannot get caught up about the details unless we learn to walk by faith and not by sight, unless we are willing to trust God, regardless what we are asked to do. We will never find the place or ever understand the plans or the process, and we will never find the things God has created for us or reach that expected end he has prepared for all of us. That's why Jeremiah told us in Jeremiah 29 11, for God knows everything he wants to do with us and through us. He said, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord. See, God knows what he's doing. I know it don't make sense sometimes. It doesn't make sense. But you will understand it. That guy that wrote that song, you will understand it better by and by. In other words, that man learned how to wait on God. And every time he learned how to wait and be patient for God to move in his life, God prepared and positioned him to walk in to the greatest moments that anyone could ever walk. I have stood in some of the most holiest, most powerful and anointed moments. And there's people that have never seen what I've seen. 
but I cherish those moments because it was in those moments uh, that it made me realize that I'm going to keep walking the way that I'm walking, that I'm going to keep talking the way that I'm talking, that I'm going to keep doing the things I need to do. I'm going to be faithful to the church. Uh, I'm going to do whatever they need me to do. Uh, you know, whenever I got this job, I thought all I was going supposed to do was preach, uh, but I've been everything. That's the fun part. And I'm not complaining. But on I've been Sunday mornings. You guys have been out here just blowing and going. And I've been in the bathroom for 20 minutes trying to plunge out the kids that, that uh, flushed the big, all the paper towels. Now, I didn't say it was your kid. It must have been one of them bus kids or something. <laughs> I better get that cleared up and nobody show up. I'll be preaching like this all the time. <laughs> right, right. But see, that's the things that you got to learn to do. You know, you got to get everything ready. You got to get it ready. God, why do I got to clean out that baptistry? We ain't baptized nobody in a few weeks. We need to get somebody baptized. So bring somebody to church, son, and we'll, we'll eat a lot of food, and then we'll baptize everybody. But see, it's got to be done. It's just one of them jobs. You know, I, 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 you know, I, here, hold on, God. I mean, you know, I'm over here, and everything was really good over here, but how come I'm over here and it, and, it, and it ain't even close to where it was over there? But see, God needs to help help you understand and get a revelation. Remember the revelation? You'll never understand him unless you have a revelation of who he is and why he does what he does. Over there, everything was all right. But see, you need to have the same spirit over here when nothing's right uh, that you had over there when everything was right. Do I need to say that again? I need God to speak into me. I need God to know that regardless if I'm over here and that's on the mountain, but I want him to know that that's the same spirit I found in the mountain. I know I can find in that darkness and in that valley. I, hallelujah, because I found him to be faithful. That's why he said, I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not evil. Why? To give you, every one of us, and an expected ending. See, we can't all reach that expected end. He has prepared for all of us until we believe and understand, like Solomon said in 1 Kings 8 and 13, where he knew God had built him a place where he could not only be safe and secure at all times, but he said it it was a settled place where he knew he could abide forever. I have surely built thee a house to dwell in, is what God told him. A settled place for thee to abide in forever. I don't understand people that are unstable in all their ways. If God was able to save you, he'll help you reach the end and cross the finish line. But sometimes it's going to be required of you. To just sit and wait and patiently wait. What, does, what did Isaiah say? In Isaiah 40, I think I got it in there. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew. How many of you have you been in that moment? Huh? And it, you've been all struggling and, yet, and all the pressures on you. Today we got a good report from one of the saints of God that they thought they could have possibly, uh, hallelujah, had something coming down. They thought the doctor could have had in them almost a death sentence. Uh, but I'm telling you, uh, they that learn to wait on the Lord will find the strength that they need. And not only the strength that they need, uh, but they'll find healing. Uh, they'll find anointing. Uh, they'll find blessings. They'll find miracles. And they'll find promises. Uh, and then when you find that kind of strength, they shall mount up with wings as eagles. And they shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. Why? Because they learned how to wait what did he say in Second First Kings eight thirteen? Throw that back up there for me. He said, "Hallelujah! I have surely built thee a house to dwell in, a settled place, a secure place." 
for thee to abide in forever. Why move when God is in your life? Why change anything when God is speaking to you and moving? If you feel the presence of the Holy Ghost in, 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 in the church and you feel the presence of the Holy Ghost driving to work uh, or when you're sitting at home by yourself reading the Word of God, you need to thank God that you have the presence of Almighty God. There's people that would give anything they could to come back and experience what we have one more time but they had a divided loyalty a divided attitude and a divided mindset uh, and God kicked them away and turned his face from them it's a fight to the finish that's why David started the beautiful book of Psalms with the words he did in Psalms 1 verses 1 through 3 blessed is the man that walketh in the counsel of the ungodly nor standeth in the way of the sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But the, his delight is in the law of the Lord. Hallelujah. And in his law doth he meditate day and night. Why? Why is that so? And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of living water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. You see, you got to understand, it's not in your season. It's in God's season. You cannot find everything he's writing about. You can't find the fruit. You can't experience. You can't eat of the fruits. You can't share the fruits that he brings forth in his seed. If you are not planted right, if you are not connected, if you are not steadfast, unmovable, that bring it forth fruit in the seed, and his leaf also shall not wither. Whew, what a promise. And whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. You want blessings? Line yourself up to the Word of God. Every step, say, God, order my steps in your Word. That's what one writer said, order my steps in your Word. I, I, I can't do it any other way. I've tried it my way, but he said, order my steps in your Word. I wish I'd have gave him that, but I failed. Because he, see, see, David knew until we settle things in our minds. And in our hearts, we will never find the things or the places God has created for us to thrive in and grow in. See, we want everything God has for us, but too many of us are not willing to wait or to follow God's plan and process long enough to receive the blessings of the Lord. You know what? That, 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 that report that we got, that's how excited I got about it. I almost started talking in tongues there again. But but but, but the report that that they that they received, I, I sent I sent a text back to them and I says that's why the the Lord said the blessings of the Lord maketh rich and and a good report maketh the bones fat. There it is in Psalms one nineteen. Mark that in your Bible and pray this prayer every no every morning one nineteen one thirty three. Order my steps in your word and not let not any iniquity or confusion have dominion over me. Don't let anything that's not of you. Don't let it touch me. Don't let it try to lure me. Don't let it try to lead me down a pathway that could be nothing but total destruction and devastation. Sometimes I'm my worst, own worst enemy. I can't shut up. I know I don't talk that much. <laughs> right. My wife is probably laying in the floor at home laughing. <laughs> but see, what we got to understand is we want everything God has for us, right? And I know what time it is. I got 10 more minutes. But too many of us, we are not willing to wait or to follow God's plans and process long enough to receive them. You know, the only difference between great and greatness is a small fraction. See, you've heard that sports, many sports, it's a game of inches. It's a game of preparation. It's, it's, it's a game that you gotta, you get, you gotta, you gotta stay focused, because you never know when your moment would come. Remember, we talked about the ten virgins a couple of weeks ago. All ten of them 
All 10 of them. Five of them made it and five of them didn't. But every one of them started with the same everything. Just like all of us started with the Word of God. It's when we get out of the Word of God. See, you know, I've, I've seen people that have served God for, for, for forever. They, they, they have generations of people in Pentecost. Uh, but for some reason, they just go away and they're away. They're nowhere close. Uh, they, they can't find their way back. Why? It wasn't a truth issue. It was not a Bible. They believed everything. They believed the apostolic truth. But it was a frustration. It was a weariness. And it was an act of impatience that they stepped out on their own and not under the will and plan of God. And let me talk to somebody. Because when you step out, there's so many of my friends that I said, are you sure that's what you need to do? In fact, I had people tell me, you are crazy. Go down to your 60 years old. You're broke down. You could barely move. You could barely walk. But I said, that, that doesn't do nothing with my heart or my mind or my voice. There's a fire in me. i got to go do this. And everybody, there was people that criticized me, said, you are crazy. But when I look around every Sunday, like just like last Sunday, I want to go to those people and I want to shout it from the tallest building with a microphone in my hand and big, large speakers as big as towers and be able to tell them, am I crazy or am I really trusting and believing in the plans that God has always had for my life? I'm 63 years old. I'm 63 years old, and I gotta, I gotta, and it has taken every step, every experience, every challenge, every fight, every victory, even every failure, for me to reach and get where I am, right here, right now. And I will tell you, and I want to tell somebody. Every one of you, it's been worth the wait. It's been worth the fight. It's been worth the struggle. Because I am in the place that God had planned for me long before. If you study God before the foundations of the world, God had everything set. That's why Solomon and different ones wrote, the steps of a good man, they are ordered by God. Because I, will, I was led by the Spirit and the Word. I found that expected end. I found that anointed place that God had prepared. And I know I will reach the finish line if I keep doing what I've done. That's why Paul told the Romans in Romans 8 and 14, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God. Do you, you get that? Not by a pastor. Not, you know, I mean, my wife, she's that one in the Bible that says, I tell them to go over there and they go over there. And I tell them to go over there and they go over there. You ain't here, honey, to defend yourself. But see, what I'm saying is, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, without Him with you, you will never reach that expected place, that expected end. See, Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. What's the old saying? Only fools rush in. Today, today you need to stabilize your relationship and strengthen your walk in God. Not by just praying and fasting, and that's all good stuff. But by learning how to trust in your experiences and trust in the salvation that God has given you. What did you tell him that day at the, the, the Red Sea? Stand still. He don't need you to do nothing. All he needs you to do is trust him. Because God's plans have always included us. And, and, and Moses was scared to death. He didn't know what to do. Pharaoh's behind him, two mountains on the other side, and this great big old Red Sea that's just mammoth. 
But God's asking one question, and he's asking you today, what do you have in your hand? What do you have in your hand? See, God at creation gave, created everything that we will ever need. And that day, he told Moses, just stretch forth your hand. See, sometimes he's going to tell you and you're going to say, God, you know, you're, you're kind of in a bad place and you don't know what to do. And he's going to tell you just, what do you have in your heart? What do you have in your hand? And then he's going to say, step forth. And then he will use you in such an anointed moment that that will put you in a place that you are persuaded and convinced that if God be for me, who can be against me? See, quit putting yourself in danger and in jeopardy because you have a divided spirit and attitude driving and pushing you right now. Learn to trust in the process and plans of God and then yield yourself to it. Don't say, I believe in God and then not trust him. Don't say you believe in God and then not have faith in him. Don't say you trust in God and you believe the word of God if you don't allow him to work through you and, and, and to fulfill the purpose and the will that he had saved you for from the beginning. God's plans have always included us. See, God has always had a plan for all of us because he saved all of us for a reason and for a purpose if we will allow him to do everything he needs to do to prepare us for the task and for the journey. We will never, and we, if we allow him to do it, we will never get lost or ever lose our way. That's why Zechariah said, and he made a statement at the beginning of Zechariah 4 and 10, for who hath despised the day of small things? Because if you will be faithful in the little things and in the small things, then he will use you as rulers to lead great things and lead great people. See, that's why many who have found this place in God, they will tell you that your great, greatest asset and your greatest resource is having a willingness to remain obedient to the Spirit of God, and to have a submissive heart. Because without them, you will never succeed in anything God needs you for. See, what's the three most important things in business? Location, location, location. And the same is just as important in God. Because no one has ever succeeded trying to work or exist outside of the timeline and the will of God for your life. You have got to live within the timeline of God or he will not be with you. See, because you have stepped outside God's will and purpose. But learn to walk in his ways. And like Isaiah said, and I close with this, in Isaiah 19, 1 and 19, if ye be willing and obedient. <laughs> That's all you got to do. Here I am, Lord. Here I am. I give all myself to you. Here I am. Why do I love singing that song? Because it reminds me, if ye will be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. Don't allow yourself to have a divided spirit and attitude. Don't be more loyal to the things of the world than you are to the things of God. Learn that God's plans have always included you. 
Trust in his word. Trust in the strength and the salvation and the experience that he has given you. And you will eat the good of the land. It is better to trust in the Lord than put your confidence in man. Father, we thank you today for your promises. Thank you today for your word. We thank you, God, for what we have received from your word today. God, continue to speak into our lives. Continue to lead and guide us in the ways of righteousness and truth. But most of all, God, give us a submissive heart. Let us be willing to submit our lives to you, to submit our minds and our hearts to you. Let us be willing to do whatever needs to be done to accomplish your will and purpose above our will and purpose. That we can trust you, God. That, God, if we will continue to walk, Hallelujah. And we would continue to reach and we would continue to declare our victories and walk towards the victory that that victory will be there when we get there. You will have already positioned us and prepared it for us. All you're waiting on us to do is to declare it and walk into it. Give the church faith like we've never had before. The hour has come and now is when the true worshiper must worship in spirit and in truth. Let us wait when we get up in the morning, let us have a praise on our heart. As we walk through the new day, let us have a song on our lips. And most of all, God, when we lay our head to rest, let, our, let us lay our head to rest with a spirit, hallelujah, that if you were to come while we were asleep, that we would still make it to that expected end that you have prepared. See, you know the thoughts that you have thought for us. And what some meant for evil, you made it for good, is what Joseph said. Why? That many, much, he said, much people can be saved. They're going to believe your word when they read it. They're going to know and that your spirit is real when they feel it. But God, let the church be full of dedicated people that are willing to sacrifice in any way they have to, to be able to speak into and to become a voice and a word for everybody that walks in this building. That's why there is a danger with people that have divided loyalties, uh, that are more faithful to the things outside than they are inside. They're, they're more faithful to the things of the world than they are the things of God. Give us a humble spirit. Renew in us a right spirit, a clean and right spirit. Uh, and cast us not away, but keep us in the will and purpose that you have for our life. Let us understand this and see this on a daily basis. Hallelujah. And don't let us ever give up and fail to give you praise for everything you've done for us, in us, and through us. God, I pray, God, that you would go with us but not from us. Thank you, Lord, that we were able to do this for the, the church tonight. And let it be strength and help in their life today. You let it give them guidance and instruction. And from all of the guidance, instruction, and experience, let them receive wisdom. Because the Bible, you said, if we lack wisdom, ask you. We ask you in Jesus' name. Let the revelation that we are talking about, the revelation of your word and your truth, let it come alive and let it live in the hearts of all that believe. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Don't forget this weekend, the dinner. Don't forget, we're going to, Saturday, we're going to set up the tables. We need all the help we can get. Don't forget the young people's fundraisers. Buy some strawberries, dip strawberries. I mean, like chocolate? Dip strawberries, dip pretzels, dip Oreos. Just bring me the chocolate. Buy as much as you can. Help these kids. They're going to be going to North America Youth Congress, and they need all the help they can get. If you have made a donation towards that, just make the check out to the church and put it in the in the little memo that it's for the youth and their NAY 
NAYC uh, Convention Fund. So God bless you, and we will see you Sunday morning. In Jesus' name.